My dream is for you to analyze me and Connor, LMFAO. We're so messed up and there's so many videos talking about how toxic we are. Well, Carly, you're in luck because here at The Rewired Soul, we're all about making dreams come true. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, my channel is all about mental health and what I like to do is pull different topics from the YouTube community, try to help teach you how to improve your mental and emotional well-being. So if you're into that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And real quick, I love you all so, so, so much. Thank you for following me on Instagram. A lot of you know that I'm trying so, so hard to get to 10,000 followers so I can get that damn swipe up feed Feature. So if you haven't yet, follow me over on Instagram. And it's awesome because I share amazing fan art like this. Look at this. Don't I have the best subscribers on earth? Yeah, I totally do. So anyways, this is a very interesting video. So full disclaimer, and it's kind of a disclaimer, but um, Carly Steele and I, uh, we've been talking for a few weeks now. I got that comment that I read at the intro of this video and I'm like, who the heck is this, right? So I went out and uh, checked her channel out and uh, her and I have talked and then not long after we talked, she went through her breakup with Connor. So we've been talking on the side. I've been, you know, just chatting with her and stuff. She's kind of like, kind of like a friend, little sister, you know, whatever. And I've been giving her tough love. And when she posted this video, I was talking to her, I'm like, ooh, girl, because I've been seeing uh, all the live streams and stuff. And I even sent her a free copy of Rewire Your Anger. I'm like, girl, you need to get off live stream. But anyways, um, so you know, I texted her and said, yo, um, I'm gonna check out your new video. Do you want me to make a video about it? And she's like, sure. I'm like, I'm gonna give you some tough love. And she's like, all right. So first off, like super proud of her for that. Like we live in a really interesting time where people's like lives are put out there on YouTube. But like with with my channel growth and some other YouTubers getting upset about me talking, da, 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 you know, whatever, like I'm here to show you like, and I'm glad Carly's being a part of this. This is how I talk to everybody, all right? This is how I talk to my son. Some of you saw the video I did with my son. This is how I talk to my friends. This is how I talk to my clients. So Carly, buckle up, girl. You're about to get some tough love. But as always, I want all of you to look at this situation with Carly and Connor and ask yourself if you can relate. You know, I'm gonna be talking about some healthy un and very unhealthy toxic things in this video. So I definitely want you to take lessons from this. Even though like I might be talking directly to Carly in this video, I want you to see how you can relate to this and see if you could take any of these tips as well. Ignored every single day from the love of my life. Started living for another soul, trying to show my worth. Lost myself in the process, knowing that it wouldn't work. All right, so first, off <laughs> girl you started out with a diss track and like here's the thing like so i might talk about pettiness a little bit in this video but i will give i will give carly a little bit of a pass just like a tiny bit of a pass and the only reason why is because something that's very therapeutic for mental health especially when you're going through like a breakup or a tough time is some kind of creative outlet all right for some people it's drawing for some people it's you know exercising for me it's you know meditation or writing or creating uh videos some of you it might be journaling carly decided to write a diss track so <laughs> i'm gonna cut her a little bit of a slack because putting her feelings out there in some kind of a uh, musical form like maybe that that was helpful all right she's been going to this bar and getting free drinks from the guy that works there and this is the guy that she makes out with and goes home to my place and sleeps in my bed with guys this is the girl you guys support this is fake from her ass up. So girl, girl, you and Connor both, oh my God. So Carly talked about how this is the last time she's gonna talk about this or whatever, and I, I hope so. I really hope so. So uh, Carly and I, we talk on Instagram too, and I get little notifications like Carly's going live, and not long after the breakup, every other live stream was just going at Connor, but you know, Carly included a clip of Connor, of course, you know, just saying like terrible things, right? But you guys, like, I've talked about this recently with like James Charles and things like that. Like when you are like emotionally charged, it is the worst time to go on social media. So one thing I will definitely say about Carly and Connor, like both of them with very large followings, like 
this has been very public and messy and I'm I'm glad that I get to be a part of this to hopefully show you guys what's, you know, some good and bad examples, all right? But YouTubers in in general, like I've talked a lot about Trisha Paytas and Jason Nash, and sometimes there's too much that's going online. But throughout this video, I'm gonna talk about how Connor and Carly's relationship really should have never gotten to this point because it seems like it was unhealthy for a very, very long time. Carly, if a cop saw what I did to you tonight, I would not go to jail. If I didn't Yeah, I was door, chasing you. I was chasing you. I was gonna beat okay, the shit out so of what you. you. He won't let you won't just leave me alone. You are stronger Let's than talk me. About you forced me to sit Orlando. there. You forced me to Ho. sit there. Ho. Alright, so I only played a part of the clip right there, and like, um, it looks like Carly re recorded this in secret, but you guys, like, don't ever, ever, I don't know when this was recorded, I don't know if it was, how long it was before the breakup or whatever, but you can, you can tell, like, there's talk of, like, abuse, possibly even physical abuse in this, and, like, for any man or woman out there watching this, like, you don't have to put up with that. You do not have to put up with that. That's one of the reasons why I'm so hard on Trisha Paytas and Jason Nash, because I don't want anybody thinking that's normal. Like, you guys, like, I've been in abusive relationships, like, and it's weird for me to talk about it because I'm a guy, but I've had women be very verbally, emotionally, and even physically abusive with me, and I stayed in those relationships. And one of the reasons, looking back on it and going through my own process, is because I thought I deserved it. Like, me being who I was, especially, you know, just growing up the way I did with an alcoholic mom and then my addiction, like, I thought I was a piece of crap. So when people were treating me like that, I felt that I deserved it. So something I try to do with my channel is try to instill, you know, some sense of self-worth and self-love and self-compassion. Like, nobody, nobody deserves to be treated like that. Now, there was some mutual toxicity between these two, and we'll talk about that in a clip that's coming up. That's how it was, so when he moved in with me, it was like really hard, and it's not his fault that his mom didn't raise him that way, or whatever, but it just is really hard to live with someone who is kind of like helpless and expects you to do everything for them. He expected his mother to do everything for him, and then I think he expected me to do everything for him. All right, so right here, I had to pause it, and I was just like, oh, girl, 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 girl. So, you guys, Carly is a great example, and Carly, girl, I hope you learn from this. This is why you don't move in with people too soon. What's interesting is that Carly said they waited like five months. I've seen people move in a lot, a lot faster than this. But you guys, before you move in with anybody, you should have a full picture of who they are, all right? So Tristan and I, my beautiful girlfriend, we just moved in together, and we've been together for two years. Two years, so throughout those two years, she'd been over to my house many times, I had been over to her house, we kind of got a feel for like how each other live, and you know, we had this like well-rounded picture. So, when Carly's talking about how she had to like take care of this guy, and like she had to remind him to like feed the freaking cats, or like clean, or whatever it is, these are things that should be known about a person before you move in with them, like 1,000%, and my suggestion for Carly or anybody else who's watching this video who has been through a breakup, like something I forgot to mention at the beginning, like this is a learning experience, you guys. Like so many of us dwell on the past and sometimes we beat ourselves up, like why did I stay in this bad relationship? Why did I do that? That is not useful to you. Like something I try to suggest is always stop. And when you're getting these thoughts or if you're beating yourself up, ask yourself, is this useful or not useful to me, right? So we could take these non-useful things and turn them into something that's useful. So every terrible relationship you've been in is a learning experience. So Connor and Carly are both young and like my suggestion for Carly or anyone out there, no matter what age you are who's been in a bad relationship, use this as a learning experience. So I would hope Carly has learned for whenever her next relationship is, not to move in with somebody until you have a full picture of that person. By the way, down in the comments below, let me know if you've moved in with a significant other far too soon. So I'm doing that and I'm like, if you wanna be with me, just grow up a little and change. Like I'm trying to start a family with you, I'm trying to be married with you, but you can't even take care of yourself, let alone me or anybody else in the world. <sighs> Right here, right here, like, this is why, this is why all of you, all of you, all of us, me too, we need friends who tell us what we need to hear, not what we want to hear, right? Like, when I was watching, and when Carly said, like, she wanted to marry this guy and start a family with this guy, and I'm like, at what point? Like, at what point did that sound like a good idea? Like, it sounds like things were, like, on the rocks from jump. 
All right, like from the beginning, one of her posts that she put in the beginning of this was like something from 2017. Like, where, like where, in the, where in the relationship do we get to a place where we're like, you know what, I could see myself marrying this guy and having kids. Like, absolutely not. And that's one of the issues that a lot of us have. We get into these bad relationships and then we wanna take it to the next step, right? We wanna get married or we wanna have kids. That's why you need to have people in your life. Like, like Carly, like I'm glad that, you know, she's, you know, she's cool with me making this video. Um, but like, this is what I talk to my friends about. Like, I have so many friends who come to me for relationship advice and they'll come to me and be like, hey, we're thinking about moving moving in together. What do you think? Da, 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 da. And I just give suggestions. People are gonna do whatever the hell they wanna do. I'm not a fool, I know that. But like, if Carly came to me and she's like, yeah, I'm thinking about marrying this dude. And I'd be like, what the hell is wrong with you? And here's the thing. It's really weird. I've mentioned this in a video before. I had this weird self-awareness, but I just didn't do anything about it. And what I mean by that is, I would be in terrible relationships with women, and I knew how terrible it was. I knew that things weren't gonna work out, but still, I would be thinking about marrying them. Still, I'd be thinking about moving in with them. Like, that is just something that's fascinating. And maybe like when I, you know, <laughs> as I continue to educate myself on psychology and the mind and, you know, just whatever it is, like I'll understand why that is. Because those should be clear red flags. Like things are not gonna work out in the future with this person. Not even gonna lie, I picked up a water bottle and I chucked it at him because I was bawling and I was getting so frustrated and he kept mocking me. Like it's disrespectful to mock someone point blank, let alone your girlfriend that is crying. It was rude i picked up the water bottle and i threw it at him and honestly i didn't think it would hit him my aim was really bad but it hit him directly in the face and i think that set him off so when that happened he like i don't know what he did but he got really pissed and he went into the room and then i just kept staying in the, the kitchen and then he tried to come back out and um he kept mocking me again so i ran up to him and then he pushed me and i like fell into a bunch of and he told me I was being dramatic. And I was like, bro, I'm not being dramatic. Like, you just pushed me, you're not being dramatic. And he did not like punch me or anything. Like, he probably just pushed me because he thought I was gonna go attack him because I literally just threw a water bottle at him. So that's probably why. But he pushed me or whatever. And um, I know it was wrong to throw a water bottle, okay, bitches? I know. You messed up, Carly. You done messed up. So now, I bet you didn't think this, but I'm about to drop some neuroscience on all of you. So Carly talks about how you know, she was trying to save their relationship. She was crying. Connor was playing Fortnite. And then he started mocking her, okay? And then she ended up throwing a water bottle at him. Not cool, okay? Carly, not cool. That's why you need to read rewire your anger. By the way, Carly just said, do you have an audio version yet? And I'm like, no. So that that is kind of my bad because I know a lot of you are waiting for the audio version of rewire your anger too. But anyways, I talk about things like that in this book. So. We need to understand the neuroscience of what's happening, all right? So Connor was triggering Carly. And when I say triggering, I, I don't mean like the typical like triggering. I'm talking about the amygdala, okay? So the amygdala is responsible for fight, flight, or freeze, okay? When we feel attacked, when we feel like we're in danger, even if that's emotionally, the fight, flight, or freeze response goes on. So Carly's fight response went on and she threw a water bottle at Connor. Again, not cool in any way, shape, or form. Then Connor retaliated because what happened, as soon as that water bottle hit Connor, his fight, flight, or feed resp uh, f uh, freeze response went off, okay? So he gets on the offensive too. And this is how mutually toxic relationships work, okay? This is why I tell everybody to just back down, to back down and calm down, get out of there, okay? Because never, never, ever, ever, ever in the history of arguments have you done something terrible to somebody and they said, oh, you know what, that's cool, because that's not how human biology works. Hell, that's not even how like animal biology works, okay? So this is why it's so, so, so important for us to work on our anger management. Then you combine this with the fact that Carly and Connor are both very young. So you've heard me talk about the prefrontal cortex. So this is responsible for impulse control as well as emotional regulation. So not only are you getting more angry than you would if you had a fully developed prefrontal cortex, but you're more likely to do something dumb because you don't have any impulse control. If you combine anger with poor impulse control, you get bad situations. And this is why I think a lot of toxic relationships happen when people are younger because of that poor impulse control, because of that poor emotional regulation. Again, I've told you the way to counteract that, especially if you're like, 
I don't, well, everybody should do it. Everybody should meditate, right? By the way, you know what? Screw it. Carly, I'm calling you out right here, right now, in this video. I told Carly that one of her goals for 2019 needs to be to meditate for five to 10 minutes a day, and I don't think she has. Carly, I know you're gonna comment on this video. You tell me if I'm wrong. You tell me if I'm wrong, and you tell everybody your best reason why you don't have time to meditate for five to 10 minutes a day, all right? And by the way, this is just public accountability, and I want all of you watching this too. You tell me your best excuse for why you're not meditating five to 10 minutes a day. I get a lot of people who ask me, like Chris, you talk about mindfulness, you talk about meditation. You guys, I have about 700 videos on this channel, look it up. I've done plenty of videos about meditation. I've done videos about mindfulness apps and everything. My channel is uh, partnered with the Calm app. That's down in the description if you wanna check that app out. But there's a ton of apps out there. My favorite's Calm though, all right? So Carly, start meditating and get your dang emotional regulation and impulse control under control. And his ex-girlfriend finds out. Um, and his ex-girlfriend is, when I say psycho, she is psycho. Like psycho like he cheated cheats on her all the time and she goes back because she's a dumbass bitch and she's just dumb like she's known in windsor for being the crazy ex all right right there right there is where i'm gonna be honest i turned off the video carly sorry yeah i turned off the video um this is when the video got to a point where you know carly was defending herself i get it i absolutely get it but when I'm talking to somebody, and this is for all of you who have friends who are in toxic relationships or they go on, you know, or, you know, there's some drama, you know, or whatever, like, we gotta redirect them. Like, if Carly was sitting, like, in my office or we were hanging out and she started going off on this thing about, you know, the person of Windsor and all this other thing, you know, I'd be like, okay, okay, let's dial it back. Because what I'm always teaching you guys is it's a lot easier to fix you than it is to fix everybody else, right? Because when we start just pointing the fingers and, like, try to, like, justify our behaviors and things like that, like, like I get it. Like, Carly was getting accused of cheating and then people started messaging Connor and all of that stuff. But, again, this is for all of the young people out there who like to party. Like, listen, if you want to go party, do your your thing. You just have to understand the consequences that come with it. All right. Not everybody who goes parties has crazy stuff happen, but if you constantly go out and party and hang out with party people and people who are doing crazy stuff, the more likely it is for crazy stuff to happen to you. All right. Like I am totally cool now. Like I, not only am I sober and I'm not telling you that you got to be sober too. Like I'm a drug addict and alcoholic who's in recovery. Right. But what I'm saying is like, my life is chill now. I have a blast. I have fun. I hang out with my cats. I hang out with my beautiful girlfriend. I hang out with my son i play video games i you know i make youtube videos but like whenever i see stories about this like you know when people go out partying or clubbing and all this crazy stuff happens i'm like girl i do not miss that all right but anyways i was talking to carly and i and i asked her i said do you feel like you have some closure now and she said yeah and that's good you know one of the chapters in uh rewire your anger is the art of venting and sometimes we got to do that you know for youtubers sometimes is making a public video, and I get it because people were invested in your relationship, but for all of you, like, it's about getting closure and moving forward. Um, one thing I will say is, in one of Carly's videos or live streams or something, she mentioned like, yeah, maybe later on, Connor and I can get together. Don't do it. Carly, or anybody out there, if you're wondering why, go watch the video I made about Erica Costell and spoiled milk and all that stuff, all right? This was a bad relationship. Learn from it, grow find somebody better, stay single for a while if you have to, all right? But anyways, let me know down in the comments below like about how you've gotten over a messy relationship or how you learned. Let's talk about this. How did you learn? What is, what is the best lesson you learned from a messy relationship that you were in? Let's talk about it in the comments below, all right? But anyways, again, go follow me on Instagram, I'm trying to get to 10K. Please, 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 I just wanna be able to swipe up. Not even me swipe up, I wanna allow you to swipe up and get to my videos easier, all right? <laughs> Anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell because I make a ton of videos. And a huge, huge, huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You are all amazing. And if you would like to become a patron and get all sorts of extra cool stuff, click or tap right there, all right? Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.